Today, we're looking at a green ink by Jeherban with shimmer in it, Emerald of Shavor. As always, there's timestamps down in the description so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, it really does help me if you check out the entire video. If you'd like to take a look at other green inks, there's a link to the, that playlist down in the description. If you're new here, hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. And if you're not new here, you already know all that, and welcome back. Now, to keep some of the writing samples consistent, the first three are always done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. Let's take a look at the first one, 90 GSM Clairefontaine. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine, and shading is going to be difficult to talk in about here because there's going to be those shimmers that really change it up. The extra fine has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, nine seconds to dry. The medium is appearing a little darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 14 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We're not really getting that, but the smear test says you could likely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. To make sure there's a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are always done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine nib. Then a Kaveco Sport with a broad nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. Now let's take a look at the second standard paper, 52 GSM Tomoe River. We do have some minor ghosting going on for a Tomoe River. We have no bleeding happening, so that's fairly good. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine appears a tad bit darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 12 seconds to dry. The medium looks darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 21 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We're not expecting it, we're not getting it, and trying to see if the shimmer will come through on camera. It's a little hard. The smear test says you likely cannot recover it if you smear while you're writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down, and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. We see that the shimmer particles have stayed in the line on the bottom, and a lot of this green is really pushing its way up, this kind of turquoise-leaning green. It's pushing its way up and gathering at the top. Now, the one on the right is let dry for 10 minutes before it's dunked into water, and you see a little bit of an outline of where that line was put down. The shimmer is all there, and the rest of the ink is pushing its way up, but very slowly, leaving a bunch of it on the paper as it's moving, which does show that it wants to be able to be a little bit more resistant, but that's because I believe these shimmer inks are also pigmented. The last standard paper is 80 GSM Rhodia Dot Pad. The only bleed through that we see is at the scrubby, which is not a big deal, so no ghosting, pretty good as expected on Rhodia. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is a tad bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and nine seconds to dry. The medium, a little bit darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 15 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation, and the smear test says you could likely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. It's in the picture of this swab that you really do see how much shimmer this ink has to give you. Now, looking at the highlighter, you see that this has quite a bit of blowout. It really gets blurry. I would not use it in a note-taking situation if I needed to go back and highlight. Water is reactivating and lifting most of this ink off of the page. You're seeing the beginning spots of white coming through. The pen flush is definitely breaking up even more of it, getting rid of it much more. The one-third bleach solution is completely removing it from the page. Now, there's no need for the bleach solution or the pen flush, as it only took water to get this out of my pen. 
The paper for additional writing samples is changed from video to video in order to have some variety and more experience with inks. This next paper is black and red notebook. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is a little bit darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and five seconds to dry. The medium is darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, nine seconds to dry. The scrubby for both, actually the scrubby for the extra fine shows us some color variation, but it's hard to see through some of the shimmer. The medium shows us none and we got none. The smear test, I do not think you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, there is an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Jeherban's Emerald of Shavor has a viscosity of 1.85, making this a wetter ink. It needs to be dealing with those shimmer particles. The next writing sample is done on Levenger paper. We do see some spots where it's starting to bleed through a little bit. That's a scrubby. I see that it's gotten deep into the paper here, here, and here, but it is not coming through the paper at all. And it's really not causing ghosting. It's just that I can see that the ink has gotten in much deeper. Other than that, no real bleeding through, definitely not touching the, other, the next page, and no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a tad bit darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, seven seconds to dry. The medium is darker than the extra fine with no feather. And I'm really looking here at the word quick. I think that's wrong. I think there's some feathering going on in the word quick. If you look at the letter K, the letter U, the letter C, I think there's some minor feathering going on in a couple spots. Wow. Just noticed that. Hadn't seen that till now. No spread, no halo, no sheen. Phone message came in. No shade, 11 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both are showing us no color variation. We're really not getting it. And the smear test you could likely recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, there's an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Jeherban's Emerald of Shavor has an average dry time of 13 seconds, putting it right on the edge, but still normal. The last writing sample is done in a hazel notebook. We do get some bleeding in spots, but not bleeding through spots. It does bleed through on the scrubby, not a big deal. That did not touch the page underneath. Very, very light ghosting, but this is a pocket sized notebook, so I don't see that as a big deal here. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is a tad bit darker than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, three seconds to dry. The medium is much darker than the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, five seconds to dry. It has, at this point in the writing, a ridiculous amount of sheen com or shimmer coming through still. That's the tough part with shimmer ink. Sometimes you get more, sometimes you get less. Scrubby for both show us no real color variation, which we're not getting, and the smear test says you could likely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Jeherban's Emerald of Shavor, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a nice red because in the swatch, it does show some red sheen. I chose a Karen Dash Red Infrared. If you would prefer a different complement color, take a look down in the description where you're going to see links to playlists sorted out by color. So what do I think of Jeherban's Emerald of Shavor? I may be converted. After sampling this and I used it up, I wound up getting a full bottle of it. Do I now like shimmer inks? What does this mean? At, ne at least I know I like Jeherban shimmer inks. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? This and with just about any shimmer ink, you really want to use a nice broad wet pen because if you use a finer extra fine, you may experience more clogging. 
you can prime the feed to move that through. And if it doesn't bother you, it doesn't bother me. I hope you got something out of this video, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow when we look at KWZ's Azure number two.